Hello, you guys are way over there. It takes a lot of uh, distance to get this big of a car in your shot. Yes, but that's not what this video is about. This video today is I love these old cars, but I have to stop working on them. Let's get started. So you guys have seen this in the shop for literally month after month after month. This is a 67 Lincoln Continental and is in pretty good shape and we've got it in even better shape. We're closing up on this job, we're getting near the end and we'll actually be delivering this back to the customer very soon. But the purpose of this video today is how things are changing and parts are drying up even for 1990s cars, but especially for these old cars. It's really kind of sad. Every time someone's called with a 1958 this or a 62 that or a 67 Lincoln or in my heart I love these cars. It's like oh my god that would be so cool. I love those old cars. But every single one that I've worked on in the past two years I barely broke even or even lost money working on it. For example, on this particular car, I just sat down and calculated over the last four months that it's been here, a half an hour here, 15 minutes there, 45 minutes there, how much time I've spent on the computer or with old service manuals searching for parts. Where can I find the parts for these? I did find the parts I was looking for, but you don't find them in 30 seconds. The number that I came up with in a four month span is 17 hours of searching for parts for this car. Would you as the customer pay a shop 17 hours, which is roughly $2,000 at this shop, just for the mechanic or the shop owner to find your parts? No, and I, I'm not gonna charge the customer that. But it's not fair to the customer, it's also not fair to me or whoever the shop owner is, or to the mechanics working on the car. All that money lost. So whatever profits I made on this were lost in searching for parts. And it's kind of a sad dilemma. It shouldn't be that way. If I was fixing this car 20 years ago, that wouldn't be the case. I know because I've worked on these cars 20 years ago. I didn't have those troubles. Another issue is the fact that it's just old. The situation kind of repeats itself where someone finds a beautiful car like this, they buy it online or they buy it from a friend or family member or whatever. They really haven't deeply looked it over yet. They just drove it a few times, they found this ain't working, that ain't working, and they have a list like this with maybe eight or ten items that need to be addressed. And thinking of finding out what's wrong with your car, we will soon be doing a video on what to look for when you're going to look to buy a car. Not as a gearhead, but as an average consumer, a buyer, who's looking to buy a car. That or you are a gearhead, but you don't have access to a lift, or the owner is being very particular about you looking over their car and they don't want you to put it on a lift or they don't want to allow you to get too deep into it. There's various situations. What can you look, how can you find out if it's a good car? I'll give you some tips on that next video. You definitely want to keep an eye out for that. But back to this car, it came here with eight to 10 items that need to be addressed and looked at. It will be leaving with over 25 items that were replaced or repaired. Now you guys know I don't go looking for random things, bogus things, and say, let's see if we can run this bill up. I'd like to really run this bill up. I don't do that here because I like people to keep coming back. The situation is, is you fix the one or two items that the customer has a problem with, then you go road test it, and the engine dies, or something quits working, or the brakes give out. Or... There's so many things on this car, or any car of this age, that are on the brink of failure, just waiting. And it never fails that while they're in the shop, they start failing. You say, well, it didn't do that when I brought it to you. No, it didn't, and now it is. You brought it to me not running or without brakes or without this going on with your car. And now I'm gonna to add to that, not because I want to, although it does make me money, 
but because I can't give the car back to you with these things broken. For example, this car did not come in here for power window issues at all. But Junior Mint was road testing it. He was checking out the cruise control issues. It was really hot out. We hadn't fixed the AC yet, which we have now, but he said, I oh, you know I'm going to roll down the window. And it started going down, and then all four power windows died. That's not on the list. And you call the customer, and they're up there, well, that was working when I brought it to you. All we did is push the button to roll the window down. So what do you guys think was wrong with the power windows? What happened there? Is it A, the fuse blew, B, a wiring issue, or C, bad contacts in the switch itself? The answer to that is the switch is so corroded and old, it has bad contacts. Actually, the windows didn't fail. Just the contacts, the way that it sends power through the switch. There was a bad connection, and it lost power to all the windows. Junior Mint took the door apart and took everything. He got it cleaned up, and now they work fine. That's not on this list. Now, situations like this happen over and over and over. Every time we take the car out, we come back with a new problem. Every time. So that's one of the reasons I'm going to have to stop it with these, because two or three of these in the shop can completely bring the whole shop to a crawl. And that's exactly not what I want to do. Now, on the flip side of that, I am not angry with the customer. I have zero issues with the customer. He's a very great person to deal with. I've enjoyed doing business with him. This is not a haggle or a heckle towards the customer. It's towards old cars in general, all old American cars. Oh, and BMWs, yes, those, those are trash anyways. You can take those to Car Ninja. All of them, thank you. So it came in with oil leaks, brakes in op, AC in op, suspension issues, tune up, fluids, cruise control. The charging ports or cigarette lighters as he call, called it. Just an inspection. It only starts in neutral. Install a dash cam, which we ended up not doing because the one he provided had failed. Clock and hood adjustment. When I took the call on this car, I thought, hey, that's not that bad. And I really love these cars. Yes, bring me your 67 Lincoln. I'll be happy to fix those items for you. Additional to the original list, the power window issue. We took it out and drove it and found out it's shifting really hard. Like a mm, boom. Mm. The alternator light just came on. There was various vacuum lines causing a rough idle. The radiator side tanks were leaking. They were just dripping antifreeze out. That's not part of the original list. We did find a clock that had been remanned, the, the dash clock, $500. We could send it off and have it done, four or $500. The customer said, no, no way. I'm not spending $500 for a clock. So we took it apart. We anticipated doing the job, but with the price, that didn't happen. Every time we took it out, we had to adjust the carburetor. We had to adjust this. There's constant adjustments. The timing's a little bit off, this and that. And it just adds a lot of time there. Also, when we put the engine back together, you guys know we pulled the engine out to reseal the rear main seal and, do, and the freeze plugs. We put it back in, the harmonic balancer, Junior Mint put it back in and started leaking power steering fluid. We're like, Where, what, how is power steering fluid coming from the main pulley? On these cars, just like in this picture, the power steering pump is ran off the main crankshaft right behind the main pulley. It's really strange. And the seal that was there Really, it wasn't that expensive. It just failed because of the friction of going in and out. I decided to cover that. I, I put that in there at, free of charge. I feel like that, that maybe we had that apart. This may be on us. So I, put a new, I was going to put a new seal in. 
I spent four hours searching for that one. And finally, I found a company that has a power steering pump rebuild kit for these. It was only like 40 bucks. It's not that big of a deal. We put it on and it fixed it. That was not on this list. The rear main seal, we put a new one in and it still leaks. Finally, we took it back apart again to see what's going on. And right where the old seal used to rub, it's actually worn a very light groove into the crankshaft. The old seal got so hardened over the years, it was almost like glass. And it just sat there, was rubbing on the steel. We put a new seal in and it just won't seal. It's not perfectly round. Or something's going on to that nature to where it won't seal anymore. So we talked to the customer, he's fine with it. He says, I understand, I don't want to put a new crankshaft in this thing. I don't want to rebuild the engine or have the crank turned down. Or he said, just stop with that. I'll accept it as is with the oil, the small oil leak. I told him, I'm very sorry. I've ran into this problem many times with these old cars. With, they use rope seals. It's actually rope, guys. It's not a rubber seal like you're thinking on a 2005 Chevy or something. It's kind of like an asbestos rope. The customer did want us to look into the cruise control. That's just not going to happen on this car. This has an old style unit out here that has speedometer cables going to it. I contacted a company that actually would rebuild those a few years ago. I had a 67 Cadillac years ago that I had sent mine to. The old speedometer driven cruise control, it has an arm that actuates the carburetor. We'll show you guys what it looks like here in a minute. I sent mine to this guy years, many years ago and he rebuilt it and it worked. I called the same guy again and he laughed. He said, man, he said, I haven't been able to get those parts for those old cruise control units for over five or ten years now. He said, I did yours like 16 years ago or 14 years ago. I said, yeah, I know. It's been a long time. He said, I quit. I quit doing those because the parts dried up on those units and there's nothing I can do. And I asked him, is there rebuilt units? He goes, no, because there's no individual little pieces and parts for those anymore. He said, you can buy used ones if you can find one and chance it. They're going to be very expensive and they may still be broken. And I said, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to chase that. That's not something I want to mess with. So the cruise control was abandoned on this current vehicle. It doesn't work. Something's wrong inside with the servo, the actual the thing that moves the arm. We did speak with the customer. He said he's just going to cruise around and enjoy it. it. It's not that huge of a deal. He wished we could fix the cruise control, but he gets it. He's totally cool with it. He said, you know what? Don't worry about it. Don't spend any more time on that. Just finish the car up. It'll be fine. So like I said, he's been very nice and very easy to deal with. As much as I want to get this thing perfect, we are not a restoration shop. We do not do that here. We work on Mercurs, Porsches, Ferraris, Range Rovers, occasionally a 1980s or 90s car, but really it's kind of on a case-by-case -case basis. I really need to see pictures of the car, and if it's roached out, no, you're not bringing it here. So it's really kind of a sad day for me. I love these old cars. But when I look at the numbers and start tallying up profits and losses, business sense would say, car wizard, you have to stop. You just have to stop with these cars. And an argument can be made, well, you shouldn't be working on these cars. Bingo. That's exactly correct. Some people out in California that do frame-off restorations. That's all they do is these old cars. They should be doing this. But those companies do exist for that reason. But if you talk to anyone, especially some of the movie stars, Jay Leno or different people that have these old cars fully restored, if you ask them, how much did it cost to get it to this level, bro? It's not eight grand. It's like 90 grand or 120 grand. Ask Count from Count Customs. These things are insanely expensive to fully restore. The idea some of these people are calling to the shop with an old car like this, and that's not the case with this customer, is that maybe Car Wizard can do all that work for me for 10 grand. And I can't. I can't restore your vehicle for 10 grand. 
The original estimate on this car was three or four grand, something like that, maybe five. It was getting close to that range, and we're going to be pretty much double that. I've also found out when I do finish these cars, no matter if it's a Lincoln or an old Mercedes or any of these 80s, 70s, 60s cars, I get the same statement every single time. And that statement is, if I would have known it was going to cost this much to get this thing sorted, I wouldn't have bothered. And nothing against you, car wizard. It just ended up costing way more than I anticipated. And I'm actually thinking about just selling the car because it's kind of depressing to me. I don't want to keep depressing people. I don't want, I mean, it's just kind of a sad situation. It really is. There's a 1961 Lincoln back there. It's a black one. That will be our final old car that we work on. And like I said, I enjoy doing the work. Luckily, that one is a lot of simple things to fix, spark plugs, wires, vacuum hoses, and there's really not a whole lot of major things wrong with it. And Junior Mint's actually doing the work, and he also enjoys it. But that will be the final old car that we will work on. Thinking of old cars, I actually have an old one that I'm selling on Gavel Road's auction site. Let's go take a look. So here's the 61 Lincoln. We're actually standing by the black one, and Junior Mint was currently working on it. He's actually making good headway. We ordered the parts. They finally have showed up, and he's starting to really get into it. But this is my 1954 Plymouth Savoy. You guys have seen a video on it. it and that is your last old car to own. Yes, I really don't care to have any more myself. And that's really sad as well. The part situation is affecting taking on customers' cars, but it's also affecting me even wanting to buy an old car anymore because hours and hours and hours can be spent trying to track down old parts and stuff. And I just... I don't have that kind of time anymore. This thing only has 30,000 original miles, original engine, original transmission. The rear end's been upgraded to highway gears. The charging system has a 6 volt alternator, and it does have some Optima batteries. We do have videos on this car. There's links in the description for it to go check out videos checking out this car. And there's also a link to the Gavel Roads auction site that's selling this car for me. And you guys can bid on it, sign up with the Gavel Roads. And this one could be yours. The auction ends August 9th. You still got some time if you want to place some bids on this car. It runs and drives perfect. I just don't drive anymore. What we have found, me and Mrs. Wizard this year, we actually haven't gone to the yacht that much is because I've got car issues and car trek and YouTube and the business. I just don't have time to, to mess with this stuff anymore. It's, it's kind of sad, but it is a sweet car. I wish I could keep it, but it just sits. So go check out the Gavel Roads auction site, and let's head back to the 67 Lincoln. So here we are under the hood of the 67 Lincoln. There's the 462. The only thing that leaks on it now, it did have valve cover leaks and freeze plug leaks and all kinds of things going on. Now it's just the rear main seal. As I mentioned, we will not be messing with it. But there has been several things under the hood that we've had to go and mess with that weren't on the list. I mentioned the cruise control. Right here is the cruise control servo. You can see it has two speedometer cables, one going from the speedometer, one going down to the transmission, and it measures speed that way. There is some electrical issues going on inside of there for the servo, and it is not a happy camper. You can see the radiator there. It actually was a single core radiator. It's been upgraded to dual core. You see it's nice and painted shiny black. We actually had that one rebuilt. I contacted several suppliers for a radiator for this thing, and they also laughed in my face. They're like, man, we even haven't made those in years. Forget it. You're not going to get one. There are companies that sell aluminum kind of be cool style upgraded radiators that fit in here. Although they are a good cooling radiator, to me, they look hideous inside the engine bay in one of these. You open the hood, and you look at the radiator, and it looks like something out of a stock car, racing car or something. It just doesn't match. It doesn't look good. I knew I wanted to keep the original radiator style. Luckily there's GNR radiator in Wichita area that rebuilds these. I think it was like six or seven hundred dollars to have it rebuilt. It was very expensive. But this is another situation where 
the side tanks are leaking, it could blow out and cause a major issue. I can't hand it back to the customer like this in good faith because I don't want to hear that it blew out on him and this, especially this hot weather where cars are having radiator issues right now in Kansas. We've seen a lot on the side of the road lately with coolant on the ground. This is not the time to cross our fingers with our radiators. So that wasn't planned to be in here. Now I have to fix it. I didn't, that wasn't scheduled. And so I took the radiator out and the guy said it's going to be two or three weeks before we can even rebuild it. It's like two or three weeks of more sitting and sitting and sitting and sitting. And you guys notice in the comment section you say that car's been in here a long time. And it has. I hope to get to the point where you guys won't see that so much anymore. You'll see cars moving and they're coming and going and that's kind of what I'm hoping to get into. Those are just a couple items. There were several vacuum hoses. There were several lines and things. There were some leaks here or there, the brake system. We got them all fixed. They were unplanned for, but they are solved. The car will leave here with those things resolved. The customer's happy. We're happy with the results that we've done here. We're gonna give it back to the customer. Is it gonna break? Yes. It's old. We didn't restore it. The customer doesn't want to put an additional 20 grand into it, so that means we're not touching certain items on this car. There's nothing that appears to be out of order or any issues right now, but I can, no one can guarantee that this thing's going to be perfect the next year or two, no more than we can guarantee you you're not going to get cancer in your lifetime. You don't know that. The purpose for this video, it does sound like a whining video, it sounds like a complaining, but I just want to let you guys know kind of a weird era that we're in. I've all, like I said, I've always enjoyed working on these. I actually thought about getting one myself, but recently I just had to tell myself, no, we're, we're do I'm done, we're done with these cars, it's too bad. There's shops that, like I said, that's all they do, that's where these belong. And it's a real strange thing in Car Wizard history that we've had to make this announcement. And that's why the video here exists, is to announce to you guys, because actually Crazy D in the shop just last week had to turn down eight of these old cars. And he said, Car Wizard, you really should do a video to let people know that we kind of have pulled out of doing these kind of cars, just so they know. If you're curious what kind of tools we use to work on this old Lincoln, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We really appreciate it. We get a small cut. Make sure to hit the subscribe button because there's many more other cars to come. Thanks for watching.